Here's what I've learned. The best of the best have got the problem. Best selling, going, going, gone. Sold, congratulations. Let's have a look at the facts. What's your goal for the next six months? John McGrath is a co-coach of The Real Estate Gym. In this four-part series, we're going to examine and unpack everything. Branding, prospecting, winning at the listing presentation, what one-on-one -on -one coaching looks like, and how to have structure. Let's meet John for part one. Today I've got John McGrath, CEO of McGrath, and he's going to talk to us about what he did to get cut through when he first started in real estate. Hey John. Hey Tom. My subscribers and the 30,000 people on my blog, they are totally obsessed with asking questions to John McGrath. They, you know, a lot of them say, hey, can you line up a meeting with John? Can you line up a meeting? I'm doing better than that. I'm going to give them something that they've got with them 24-7. Good. Uh, uh, John, you've been in real estate now, is it 30 years? Yep. Okay. When John McGrath started as a 21-year-old, yeah, I actually started in property management when I was about 18, and then I started selling when I was about 20. Okay, so you're 20 years of age, and that um, was, what year would that have been, John? Uh, that was, uh, what was 30, 32 years ago. Okay, so your competition then was generally an older uh, demographic agent? Yes, well, Di Jones, who has become a legendary agent, she's out of the game now, but Di was my biggest competitor. Um, but generally speaking, if I had to say the profile of the principles I was against were probably double my age yeah. and therefore double my experience when it came to real estate. Okay, so let's just picture, how does a guy that's 20 years of age firstly start getting called in to have an opportunity to represent an owner? And part two of that question is, once you were in, how did John McGrath convince an owner that they should go with him over people that had been in the business for two, three decades? Like most newish agents, uh, I wasn't getting called in, um, and especially at 20. So you, if you're very young and very, very new, there's kind of two two things, two tail, uh, sorry, two headwinds against you. So what I had to do, Tom, a few things. One was I decided that the only way to build confidence was product knowledge. So I, I undertook a survey and a study on real estate like no one ever had seen. So I knew everything that moved in my area, I knew the history of the area, I knew everyone that lived there, I knew all the local business people, I knew every square inch of the Paddington Market just across the hill here. Um, because I found, you know, I, I couldn't walk into a vendor and say, look, you know, when I sold this property or in the last 10 years, here's what I've learned, because I just couldn't. So I had to walk in there and I had to have some level of confidence and that came off the back of having exceptional product knowledge. Second thing, Tom, I decided that buyers were generally neglected and I think today still that's applicable. So I really thought I would focus on buyers and if I focused on buyers, number one is they talk to sellers, number two is they eventually became sellers. Um, and, and I would create a sort of a, an attraction energy back then, although you know you coined that phrase, I didn't think of it as then, but I thought of it as raving fans and people that would tell others about the good service experience. So I think by really focusing on product knowledge and giving buyers an exceptional experience, and I've got to tell you, if I ran across you as a buyer at an open for inspection, you would hear from me probably once a week until you bought, could be for three years. I would follow buyers up for three, four, five years, and every week, Tom, what did you see on the weekend? You know, you're still looking, um, what, you know, why didn't you buy that? Did you bid at that auction? <clears throat> so that, that became the cornerstone of my foundation, and then I found, Buyers did start telling sellers about me, because often they'd say, oh, you bought in Paddington, who'd you buy through, what were they like? So through that process, then I got to a point where sellers eventually started calling me in, you know, some months down the track. But you ha I had to work very hard to earn the right to be called in by a seller. I, I, there was none of that sort okay. of given to me up front. So John, if there's a young person watching here and they've got one or two listings on their books only, but they've got a plethora of buyers on their books, um, they can only talk to them about their one or two listings. What are the other sorts of conversations that uh, a great agent that works buyers, and you're saying that you basically became like a buyer's agent. That's Correct. what you're sort of literally saying there. You, 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 yeah. you, you, you're working buyers. Um, what happens when, they, um, when you don't have listings for them? Are you uh, helping them what, getting information on other agents? Well, I guess, Tom, I found that, you know, b because I was so immersed in the buyer experience, I was always busy. It wasn't a matter of twiddling my thumbs. Up until I was starting to get invited into to vendors and listing opportunities, I was flat chat with buyers, so it was okay. 
whatever I had, whatever anyone else in the office had for sale that could be open this Saturday, I would open this Saturday. Right. So I, I, some of the other agents that were kind of working in my office were doing better than me. Uh, in fact, all of them were. So I would say, look, at those two properties you can't open this weekend, can I open them? So I found that if I op did more open for inspections, then I connected with the community. And of course, as we now know, <coughs> If 100 people come to an open over over time, 20% of those are going to be sellers. They're doing research, they're checking out agents, they're checking out the competition. So I found that if I could really work as many open for inspections on a Saturday as I could, even if I handed the commission back to the agent whose listing it was, it didn't worry me. What I wanted to do was be in the community, have an A-frame out the front, have a flag out on the, on the board, and be meeting people to either fill my pipeline of buyers or potentially meet sellers. So if you did that, and I think the key thing, Tom, is energy. And at ARIC recently, um, where you did such a great job facilitating ARIC, um, where Robin Banks, who I know is a favorite of both of ours, and he said, you get back the energy you give. Yeah. So if you want to get energy, and, and what does energy mean? It means people supporting you, people giving you listing leads, referrals, you got to give it out. So for me it was, you know, what are the activities I can undertake to really make sure I'm going to get people back in referral. So open for inspections were great. Uh, and then when I occasionally got a listing or two, you know, in the early days when I get a bit of momentum, we always did on-site auctions. Right. Again, it was the opportunity to take ourselves to the community and showcase who we were and what we did and meet more people. Yeah. So at an, at an auction, I would meet 50, 70, 100 people from the street or surrounding streets. And again, if I followed them up, acted courteously, remember their name, if I met them at open for inspection last week, all those little things, people started warming to you. And I found that it came this tipping point where all of a sudden I went from never being invited into something to getting a couple of calls in a week. I thought, wow, okay, that's a big change. And then, you know, you're getting a couple of calls a day eventually as you built your profile. The other thing was always around marketing, and there was no internet in those days, but I was very strong on local area marketing. Signboards, I wanted a signboard on every single property I had and local area marketing. So big, bold, confident ads, well put together, well written. Um, that was really important for me too because not only did it help my client get the best outcome, which was the primary focus, it also showed other people in the community I was a very strong and confident marketer. So even though there are agents with 20, 30 years more experience than me, and in many instances more talent than me, People were starting to see this new face emerge, or it was really just a name on, a, on an ad or a name on boards, and then it was a face that opened for inspections. But it was a face that would ring them back, follow them up, and then I'd say, Tom, can you mind if I keep in touch with you? And then the next week, I'd ring again, and then I'd ring again. And these people were saying, wow, I've never had that service. So I think, you know, whether you're a new agent or not, buyer servicing is a great way to get attraction from vendors. Okay, that's um, outstanding. John, I've got to say, one of the things, uh, and I've, I've followed your brand and your methodology uh, for over two decades, McGrath have had an incredible ability where when you have a listing and where you have a sale, you seem like a like a vacuum cleaner to be able to take every other potential person that's even thinking about doing a transaction, they seem to get on the McGrath bus. Mm. It's like anyone that was vaguely thinking about it, whether they showed up to your on-site auction, whether they were aware of it because mm. of your marketing, whether they got the extra phone calls, but it appears that the method that you've used, John, has been less about interrupting strangers yeah. and being cold, but more leveraging activity in a specific area when you've got work there. Well, yeah, well said. Success creates success, and there's no better time to list a property than when I've just sold one. And we would be very strong on I wasn't big on door knocking and stuff, although some people do that well, and, and good luck to them. But I was more about <clears throat> if I had an event or a success moment, uh, a new listing, uh, a sale, the ability to let people in the area know about it um, by either opening it for inspection, auctioning it, sold sign, uh, I could do a, a success just sold card, just listed card, did auction invite cards, did auction invite door knocks on the morning of an auction, inviting people in. So you're right, it was very much around creating energy and activity around a listing. Then of course getting on the phone in my pipeline which was growing every single day, so it started with zero and then it ended up with 100, 150 potential people that are going to sell in the next year or two. And then I'd ring them and say, just want to let you know, had a great result on the weekend. I'd also, Tom, tell them something about it. 
so almost like a mini case study. You just want to we had a great result. We sold it for seventy two thousand above reserve. It went to a family that of just moving into the area from South Africa, um, and they only saw it five days before the auction. A couple of things. One is it creates a story that people can remember. Yeah. And two is it creates credibility. If I just say, oh, I got a great result, sold above auction, it's kind of like a generic headline. If I say a little few bits of detail, now of course couldn't give anything that was intimate or personal away, but you know, general information that gave it a little bit more credibility, and people hung on to that. Uh, and people say, look, thanks for keeping me informed, sounds like you're going really great guns, sounds like the market's good. People like energy. Yeah. People like positive attitude. Yeah. And yet most people I come across, Tom, agents, salespeople, anyone, they're not particularly positive. They're kind of like, you know, I'm not saying they're all depressing or underwhelming, but they're just kind of like a bit neutral. You have to be an enthusiast. You have to be excited about what you do. You have to be passionate. So when someone says, you know, how are things going? And you say, look, I'm really blessed. I just do the greatest thing in the world, which is I help people find a new home. And I live in an area, or I work in an area that I live in that I love. And I see interesting people and beautiful homes every day. What could be better? Whatever is your authentic version of how you feel about being in real estate, if you take that into the field every day, you're going to, again, attract great energy to you. Okay. John, <coughs> one final question. Um, if you had $10,000 to spend on personal marketing mm -hmm. in 2016, what would John McGrath do with them? Uh, first things that come to mind, one would be client appreciation. So right. making sure my clients knew, so anyone referred me something, a beautiful gift, anyone bought a home, a beautiful housewarming gift, sold a home through me, a beautiful gift. Uh, not around bribery or, or that, but around genuine intention to let someone know I appreciate their support. Uh, events. So I know Bethlehem Richards has a great annual event down at Bondi Icebergs where she, and it grows each year because she gets more and more clients and it's kind of like her biggest event of the year. So what event could I do where I could show appreciation and thank people? Um, so I think that's, that's really key. They would be the key things. Um, the things that I don't have to pay for that probably bring me as much or more is vendor paid marketing by doing a great job marketing what we're doing. So even social media nowadays, again at Eric, Sherry Stora gave us a great example of what an enthusiastic agent that's committed to social media can do for very little outlay. Yeah. So I think around client appreciation, saying thank you to clients, bringing them together, joining the local chamber of commerce, right. I'd invest you know like a thousand dollars of the ten going to an event each month for Chamber of Commerce, meeting people in the marketplace. So you're not talking about John here taking out big expensive billboards or TV things. You're, these seem to be community based It's events. all about people, Tom. It's connection. What can I do? I'd rather, to be quite frank, uh, I'd rather go and shake hands and meet people and talk about the market in a more intimate setting than just kind of do lots and lots of DL cards around the air. And for me anyway, and I'm like, some of those other things, I always, the caveat I say to people, if something's working for you, continue but be open to the fact there could be something else or even something better. Okay, well there you go. This is the stuff that John was doing. This is the stuff that he suggested doing. I mean, I know that a third of the uh, uh, top 100 REB salespeople, one third are McGrath people, mm. which is quite extraordinary mm. when We're you consider it. so many thousands of salespeople out there and so many uh, great brands. Um, so John, um, I look forward to seeing you at our next segment. Thanks Tom. Thank you. That's given you a test drive of Real Estate Gym. Let me tell you, if you're a subscriber and a member of the gym, you'll be getting videos from our co-coaches all the time. You'll be getting mentors, you'll be getting scripts, you'll be getting dialogues, you'll be getting templates, and most importantly, my prospector, your personal accountability system to make more calls, get more appointments, get more listings. From around $10 per week, realestategym.com.au your personal coach.